Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning to our Tuesday morning truce. And we appreciate everybody that's here this morning, those that are online, and we'll be getting online. And uh, we just appreciate everybody being out. It is absolutely a beautiful day yeah. out here in South Florida. I just thinking, uh, as I came out of the house today, we're just about through the rainy season. We're just about through hurricane season. And, man, we've been blessed. Amen? Amen. Hopefully we can make it through. But I tell you what, the weather is absolutely Absolutely beautiful. I don't know if he can get in, Pat. I think I don't know if he's locked himself out or what. There. <laughs> Anyhow, I trust that trust that you're having. I trust that you're having a great day, and that all's going well with you. We're going to get started up here. Got a few things to talk about, so let me remind you of a couple things. Don't forget, we got baptizing service on Sunday morning. And uh, we're excited about that. Miss Diane is going to be baptized Sunday morning. We're excited about that. And maybe a couple more. So if you know a couple people that uh, have been saved and have been baptized, maybe you can remind them of that. Amen? Amen. And then put this on your calendar. I probably shouldn't tell you this, this early, but there will not be a TM, TMT on November the 7th. That's not next week. That's the week after that. November the 7th will not be TMT. I'll be out of town, so we will not be having TMT on that Tuesday. And then November the 11th is a young adult get-together. That's coming up soon. Veterans Day recognition will be on Sunday, the November the 12th. And uh, we got a little something surprise, a little thing. Hopefully it will work out for the veterans there, and we'll be doing something for them. And then don't forget, December 15th is our Christmas dinner. So uh, we got we got a lot, lot going on. Wow. So please help share the podcast. And uh, I started last night in, in November. I'm going to drop the attributes, and I, I'm, I'm going with Thanksgiving thoughts. And I began working on those last night. And uh, just to do some things for Thanksgiving. And, you know, November's the month of Thanksgiving. So, uh, but uh, please help share the podcast and the sermon on hell ought to be shared by everybody. Amen. That ought to be shared. You'll put that, you'll, it's on YouTube. You can email it. You can text it. You can send it out to somebody. That ought to be shared. I tell you what, people need to hear more about hell today. Amen. Amen. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Then I was thinking I meant to come in and say something, Brother Bill, and, and we got to talk about everything else a minute ago. The revival is going to be here before long. Yes. Uh, can you believe that? I mean, we're just about, we're still in revival. And uh, Randy and Mary be here January the 21st, I believe, is when that is. And that's not, that's going to be here before we know it. So yes. let's continue to pray for that. I just thinking they start getting some brochures and signs and, and stuff made up for that. So don't let me forget that. Birthdays today. Robbie Biddle's birthday is today. Roxanne, you didn't forget that, did you? Okay. Happy birthday to Robbie today. And then Joanne Shires' birthday is on Thursday. So happy birthday, Miss Joanne. Don't forget to pray every day at 320. We sure got a lot we need to pray about. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for a church. Jesus will send more souls to us and we can see more people saved and Again, we're still having visitors every week, every week. Huh? My husband said thank you for the happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Robbie. We love Robbie. So don't forget, we're supposed to find something out on our permits on uh, the meeting, city meeting in November. That'll be coming up. I forget what day. That might be the 7th, isn't it? Might, that'd be the first Tuesday. I think it'll be the seventh. So, so uh, let's let's hope that uh, that all goes through. And then John has been checking. We need two, in case anybody has any laying around. I'm I'm thinking maybe you might have some laying around. Big D, listen to this. You might have some down there. Okay. We need two, 18 inch culverts. <laughs> so anybody got any? <laughs> Anybody got any of those laying around? So kind of spread the word around. We have to buy, how much do you say they cost? $530 a 
$530 a piece plus without taxes. So five hundred three that'd be another that'd be another eleven hundred dollars almost if to put those culverts in if nobody has them. Uh, they won't let us put in a twenty four inch, so so Ray had us one a twenty four inch, but we we can't find any eight ten inch culverts. But if you've got one, if you've got any connections with anybody, see if anybody wants to donate a couple culverts to the church. Then pray for our country, our leaders. Uh, man, we're in, we are in a mess. I mean, man, we're in a mess. Pray for Nina and and the Ukraine as she ministers to those people over there. Pray for Israel. Wow. Pray for the world situation. We're on the brink of World War Three. You know, I don't say that just. To, that's not rhetoric. That's not just. That's not. That's not words. I've been listening to other people. That's the talk. If I had friends and family in the Middle East, I'd be getting them out. You better be getting them out. I'll tell you what, it's ready to blow. So we need to pray for that situation. That's so sad. So sad that uh, we're in that shape. But to pray for pray for pray for Israel, pray for the world situation. I just said I just saw something today one of the Palestinian movements had put it put uh, supposedly put an article out but they want to just kill all the Jews and that's nothing new to them. That's their, their their goal in life, but uh, I got a feeling it's going to backfire on them. So pray for Sebby and Stacy as their ministry and his health, their daughter Becky and their granddaughter. Pray for Pastor Steve and Paula and uh, their ministry up there in West Virginia, and their daughter Eden as she's going through what she's going through with Pastor Matt Roberts. Uh, was back in the pulpit last week, and uh, he's had those T I T I A's. And boy, he was in bad shape. And uh, we need to pray for Pastor Matt and his family and his church. Play, play. Pray for Glenna's grandson Andrew, who's having trouble again. Uh, Evelyn is having tubes put in her ears tomorrow. I see everybody bundling up. You want to bump that up a notch? There, you don't want to bump it up. So just sit there and just freeze. Pray for little Logan Brown. His surgery is tentatively scheduled for November the 8th. But uh, me and AJ both have RSV and ear infections, so pray for all of them. Christy Butts, I don't know if you saw her or not. Christy Butts' aunt passed away, Betty Clark. Anybody know Betty Clark? So, y'all know Betty Clark, anybody? So pray for Christy and her family and the passing of of her Aunt Betty. Joanne had the surgery yesterday and had the glass removed out of her foot. Pray that she has a good recovery on that. Uh, Ronnie Sharpton was in the hospital over the weekend at home awaiting upcoming surgery. Uh, Harley's friend Gracie had surgery last week for endometriosis. Wanda's daughter-in-law Reagan is to keep her in her prayers as she's getting close to having a baby. She's on bed rest Heard from Jim Kanuki, and he's having both knees replaced in December. So remember, remember Pastor Jim, Brother Jim. Uh, Shirley Matson's been sick. I think they might be home. Pray for her and Cliff. Andy Wortham is having a surgery on December the 5th. Dream of Sergeant had lung cancer last Friday. Doctors think they got it all. Bill's Mars sister Rachel's in a nursing home. Uh, Shirley Matson's brother Steve, who's one of our snowbirds, one of your neighbors down there, is having knee replacement. And uh, we just got lots and lots of people on our prayer list. If you saw it today, you see that there are a lot of people on there. And uh, just I pray that you look over that and you pray for those folks that are on there and remember them and be thankful today that you're not on it. Amen. Amen. I have surgery on the 7th. Bill's having sinus surgery, sinus surgery on. November the 7th, Bill's having, Bill Floyd is having sinus surgery on November the 7th. So pray that that goes well. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you today for your blessings. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. We could never, ever thank you enough for your blessings and your goodness bestowed upon us, Lord, just for coming and dying on the cross, Lord, and giving your life and your blood and shed that we could be saved and then to save us. Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we pray today that you bless our time together today. Thank you for the people that are here. 
Thank you for those that are online, those that will be watching later on the replay. And, Lord, we just pray that something will be said or done today, Lord, that will be an encouragement or help, Lord, in their Christian life today. And, Lord, we just ask that you bless those on our prayer list today, Lord, all those names that have been called out, all those names that are on the list. Lord, so many people need help and need prayer. And, Lord, we just lift them up to you. And we're thankful that we can do that, Lord, that we can just lift people up to you. And, Lord, we ask you today, Lord, to bless our church. Thank you for all you're doing. Lord, as we get down to a time almost for the permits and all the things we need and, and culverts to be put in, Lord, we just have to just rely on you and trust you and ask you to help us and, and bless us and give us all the things we need. If we can't get to culverts, maybe we get the money to get them, Lord, and, and all that all that's going to cost for this building, Lord. We just trust you to do that. And, Lord, we just ask you today, Lord, to help us in our study. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We're on lesson number three, our discipleship lessons on prayer, part number three. And I, I really thought today would be the last lesson. I'm not going to tell you that now because I got up this morning and I got to re, I got to reworking it and studying on it and it just kind of just blew out into a little bit uh, of another area. But we'll see how it goes as, as, as the day goes on. But we've been talking about prayer. And let's review just a little bit what we've talked about. You remember last week we talked about why should you pray. And we talked about why you must pray. And then we talked about some principles of prayer. And then uh, we, we, as we talked about the principles of prayer, we said you need to pray always. Pray from the heart. Pray to Jesus like he's your best friend. You can pray to God through Jesus, and you can pray specifically. So those are some principles of prayer that we talked about. And then number four, we talked about the things that can hinder your prayers, and that's where we stopped, and that's where we want to get started today. And I'm just going to go back over those again today to get caught up to where we are. I can't remember which one we stopped on, but there are some things that can hinder your prayers and your prayer life. Do you believe that? Absolutely, there's some things. Here it is, number one, is unconfessed sin. Sin in your life, sin in a Christian life shuts you down. Now you can say what you want, you can, you can, you can do what you want, the Bible's very plain on that. And I tell you what, sin, sin will shut you down. It's like cutting the phone line down, man. The communication has been cut. It's like when the internet cable's cut today. And the internet goes down all over the area and there's no way to communicate. Sin shuts your prayer life down. I wish we could understand that. So many people pray with, with sin in their life. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the sins that we're talking about, just things that, that happen on a daily basis. I'm talking about that, those lifestyles of sin and sin that we don't even confess. Sins that we just say, well, there's nothing to that. There's something to all sin. And we'll be talking about that hopefully here in a little bit as we go on. But unconfessed sin will shut you down. And we use this verse, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But, there's a big but, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Wow. Then in Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Sin, let me say again to you. Sin will shut your prayer life down. In fact, I tell you what sin will do in your life. It will get you where you don't even want to pray. You'll feel distant and separated from God. And you'll feel guilty. And then you'll not want to pray. So sin will definitely shut your prayer life down. Amen. Let me encourage you to keep the prayer lines open. Boy, I tell you what, if ever there was a time that we need to keep the prayer lines open, it is right now. Amen. And man, we don't need anything to get in the way. We don't need anything to clutter that. We don't need anybody snipping the lines. I remember those old Western movies. Remember when they'd run the, what, I, my mind went blank. What was it? Huh? Thank you. You know exactly what's talking about. The telegraph lines. And man, they'd get out there and cut them. 
And then the, the, they couldn't communicate. That's the same thing that sin does in the life of a Christian. It just shuts you down. It shuts you down. You got to get that thing. You got to get, get that stuff cleaned up and get it out of your life and not let, you don't let sin linger. Somebody said, keep short accounts with sin. Don't let them pile up. Don't use, well, I'll pray. I'll pray next week or next month and get mine caught up. No, no, no. Every day you need to stay caught up. Every day you need to stay caught up and make sure there's nothing in the way that's hindering your prayer life. Well, I could just go on and on about that. Amen. The only prayer that God hears from an unsaved person is a prayer to be saved. Unsaved people say, I'm praying. They don't, they don't need to pray. God doesn't hear the prayers of unsaved. Now, when we say God doesn't hear, God can hear, but God's not obligated to move or answer to, to do anything about it because you're not one of his children. I tell you what God will do. God will hear you when you pray, God, I'm lost and unsaved and I need Jesus. Amen. That's the prayer that God hears. That's a, that'll get a hold of heaven right there when you begin to pray that prayer. But we've got so many unsaved people today, as I keep saying, prayers become fascist. Everybody prays. Our, our government's praying. No wonder they're not seeing anything happen. <laughs> Maybe that's why we're not seeing anything happen. The sin in their life and, and all the stuff that's going on. And then you got, then you got these celebrity Christians that we talk about that, that they say they get saved and they continue in their sexual, uh, uh, misconduct. They're drinking, they're drugging, they're partying and they act like they're just, they're just living at the foot of the, no! 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 No, absolutely not. The only prayer, let me say it to you again. The only prayer that God will hear from an unsaved person is the prayer to be saved. Amen. That's where an unsaved person has to start. Why would an unsaved person even pray? They don't love God enough to be saved. They don't love God enough to have him in their heart. They don't have God, love him enough to be faithful to God and to serve him. But yet they're going to pray when problems come. Oh yeah, everybody prays then. But listen, you need to get, you need to get, man, you need to get it in there. Wow. Wow. You need to get, get that prayer life straightened up and cleaned up. Amen. Number two, we talked about this. Here's another thing. Not only an un, unconfessed sin, but an unforgiving spirit. And again, I'm going to say this is the, this is the area that causes Christians a lot of trouble. And this is one of those things that's easy to say and hard to do for some people. You can harbor hatred and ill feelings toward people and be right with the Lord. I'm just being honest with you. You know, we get mad and upset and hurt and disappointed and aggravated and frustrated and we, and we get grudge. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what happens when you hold on to things in your heart. It turns into bitterness. And then when you get bitter, Wow, it just eats you up. As we talked about last week, it's like acid in a container. It'll eat the container up. And you may be mad and aggravated at somebody, and the person you're mad and aggravated at may not even know. And they're just whistling Dixie going down the street, just, just having a good time and just praising the Lord, and you're sitting there just pouting. Because let it go. Let it go. Amen? Amen. They ain't nobody ever done anything to you Worse than what you've done to God. Amen? Amen. You went years and years and years without getting saved. Right. Every day you went, every day you, you went without getting saved was, let's say at least that was one sin. The sin of not getting saved. Right. You think about how many days, how many weeks, how many months, how many years. You think about that pile of, that, listen, I mean, it's like the smoky, smoky mountains or the rocky mountains piled sky high. And God forgave you of every one of them. And then somebody bumps you the wrong way. And you get a burr under your saddle. And you just puff up and say, well, I'm not going to forgive them. And then you want to pray and say, well, oh, God, help me. And God's probably wanting to say, oh, God, you need to pray to me and ask, you, ask me to help you get rid of that in your heart. So unconfessed sin and unforgiving spirit will get you. Here's a good verse. Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind one to another, 
tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You glad you're forgiven? Man, aren't you glad your sins are covered by the blood? Aren't you glad that those things will never be brought up? The Bible said they've been cast as far as the east is from the west, thrown into the depths of the sea. God will never remember, remember them against you again. Why don't you let things go? Why do you hold on? You know there are people just hold on to stuff for years and years and years and years and years, and, years and it just eats them up. It'll destroy you. Amen? Amen. Then Jesus said in Matthew 6, 6, 14 and 15, For if we, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Wow. Don't, don't, don't let that stuff lay in your heart. Amen? Here's another one. I don't, is that where we stopped? Anybody remember? Is that where we stopped right there? Number three. Bitterness toward your spouse. Wow. Listen. You say, I don't know about that preacher. Well, here's the verse to prove it. First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them. Talking about your wives. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Give an honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your what? Prayers. Prayers, Prayers be not hindered. I tell you what to shut you down in your prayer life, fighting and fussing with your spouse. You ever go? You ever try? You ever try to pray to God and you're mad at your wife or your husband? I guarantee it doesn't work very well. <laughs> I guarantee it until you get until you get that thing fixed up with your spouse, your prayer life's going to be hindered. Amen. Amen. Discord, discord in the home is a hindrance to prayer. Discord. In, why do you think Satan has all of his big guns turned on the home? He wants the home to be in discord. He wants you to fight and fuss. He wants you to be aggravated. He wants you to be upset with one another. He wants you to be mad on Sunday morning before you get here. He wants you to be mad on Sunday night before you get here. He wants you to be upset when you're getting ready to come through the door on Wednesday night. Because listen, if you come in happy, it might rub off on somebody. Discord in the home is a hindrance to your prayer life, which is a hindrance to your spiritual life, Amen. which is a hindrance to how, how you grow in the Lord. And there are a lot of people, man, they can't get, they can't grow because they, they can't get along with their spouse. And that man, let this fight and fuss and argue and oh man, oh man, oh man. Thank God I ain't never had to do that. And I'm, I don't mean to say we've never had our disagreements. And we've had our fights, but you know, you know, but you know what? Every fight we've ever had, we go back and, and when we, when we finally get it worked out, you know what it was about? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing big. I've been married 45 years. I don't know if we've ever had a fight over anything big. It's generally a misunderstanding. It's generally something, something said in the wrong way. And generally I'm the one doing that. You know, most most of our problems have come from my end, and I've been on her end, been on my end. I'll take I'll take full credit for that, not proud of it, but be honest about it. Most of the problems we've ever had in, my, in our marriage come off of my end, and that's just, that's just caused me being bullheaded and stubborn. Huh? She will she be shouting owls down if she is here this morning on that. But I'm just tell, I'm just telling you, man. Listen, discord in the home is a hindrance to you. It's a hindrance to your prayer life. It's a hindrance to your spiritual life. And and think about this. Now here I'm gonna say something. Else. Look at this. Discord in your home can affect your children too. Listen, I haven't been pastoring 45 years, and even though I can't hear well, I still hear enough to know what's going on. Through the years, I can remember back kids saying, let me tell you, let me tell you, I can remember, let me just put this slide up so you'll see it. Dads and moms come to church and act like saints and go home and act like sinners. <laughs> and your kids see it. I've had kids say it. Boy, mom and dad, they go to church and boy, you'd think, you'd think they were the best Christian in the world. As soon as they get home, the fight and fuss and cuss and kicking the cats and the dog, uh, just, and everything. Don't you think that affects kids? 
Do you think kids are stupid? Kids aren't stupid. They see that. They listen. You hey, listen. Get an education. Am I right? Get an education and watch those little fellers come in. Wow. The home life is, hey, when they come in from a terrible home life, their whole life is upset. It's no wonder we've got kids that don't want to come to church. It's no wonder they say when kids are reaching 20 years old, the dropout rate of church, it's just astronomical. I blame a lot of that on moms and dads. You ought to be the same. You ought to be, I certainly be the same at the house you're here, but you ought to be the same. You ought to be the same at the house as you are here. You ought not, you ought not have to put on a facade and put on a, a, a face to come into church. You go home, you ought, to be, you ought to be just like you are at church. And let people see that. And let, that that's what's wrong. That's what, boy, I'm on a, I'm on a tangent on that. That's one of the things wrong with the church today. People go, everybody knows every hypocrite in the church. Everybody knows everybody's not living right. Everybody knows people that, that can't get along. And you know what? It spills over. And don't you think it doesn't affect your kids? They know that. They're not stupid. They can hear mom and dad fuss and fume and, and fight and, and carry on. And, and, and the worst thing you can do, and I'm talking to all of us old people. We don't even have kids. All of our kids are grown. Well, we've got one back there still going on. But, but I'm kids know that. They do. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Miss Glenn, come in. Am I right? Come into school. They know that. You see, I mean, just see them. That's why. Oh, man, it breaks my heart. Mm. That's, what, that's why teachers, teaching is a great profession. Sometimes only love those little fellers get. It's from a teacher. Sometimes only food they get is from the school. Now, you just put that article out every year, remember? You know, sometimes, sometimes there are people teaching that shouldn't be teaching. Amen? Amen. There are people preaching that shouldn't be preaching. There are people doing everything that shouldn't be doing it. But there are people, teachers throw a fit over a student who comes to class and don't have a pencil. And they might not even have food to eat that day. I do bus. I did bus duty for three years over there at Everglades, and sometimes those mornings got pretty cold. And but I'd be out there bundled up like an Eskimo. Some of those little kids coming off in their little shorts and no jackets, not but bless their heart. Wow. They probably dressed themselves. Huh? It's probably yeah, exactly dressing themselves, but it's so sad. Boy, the home, our homes are in a mess. Best thing, hey, grab your husband, grab your wife, pray together, yes. pray together, man. Listen, be, listen, be a spiritual force for God. Amen. Don't allow Satan to bust your home up. Right. If he could, he'd bust every home in this church up. Right. Don't you let him do it, Amen. Amen. Man, that's a man. I'm on a tangent on that. That's a, that's the truth, isn't it? Right. Number four. Here's another hindrance to prayer: just prayerlessness. I guess that's a word, isn't it? It's a big word. Prayerlessness. Just simply not praying. Just simply not praying. They're just people. Just simply, they just don't pray. James four two says, "You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war yet you have not." Because you ask not. Now we can make a big dissertation here and give you a big speech about what to pray for and how to pray. You know what? I, just ask God for anything you need. You might ask amiss. You might ask selfishly. If it is, God will take care of that. As I said last week, I, lo, I, lo, I what was it? Little, little guy said Sunday there. I said, have you ever been surprised? He said, yeah, we've had cats under the house. <laughs> You, you know, you know. I, I, somebody said the other day, one of the people online told me, said, said they love when we take that minute with the kids. They said, you act like you're just so locked into them, you don't even care about anybody else. Said, you're not paying attention to anybody. I said, well, I am locked in. I care about them. I love to just listen to them. That's why I like to ask them questions. You never, it's scary to ask a kid a question. <laughs> You probably get the answer you might not want to hear. Right. But I love it, don't you? 
Man, listen, thank you for, thank you, thank you, Carla. Thank you, everybody that works in the children's church, that drives a van, everybody that helps, everybody that works in the nursery. We need to do everything we can for these little kids to give them a chance. Amen? Amen. Listen, but listen, be people of prayer. Amen? Amen. Be people, pray. You say, well, you know, again, people say, well, you know, I heard from people who said, well, you know, I don't pray because I'm, I don't want to ask for myself. Listen, if you don't pray for yourself, who is? Pray for your own needs. Pray for yourself. You've got problems in these. Yeah, you've got a right as a child of God to go to the throne room of God and ask God for help. Don't you depend on, listen, hey, listen, I don't depend on everybody else for my prayers. I want to, listen, I appreciate you praying for me, but I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you who's praying for me. Me. Me's praying for me. You say, well, that's pretty selfish. Well, listen, I, me knows what me needs. Amen. And man, I want to talk to God about myself and my needs too. So you say, that's self. No, it's not selfish. That's being a child of God. Amen. Amen. So be a person of prayer. Don't, 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 listen, take time. You can pray everywhere. You don't have to be on your knees. You don't have to have your eyes shut. You can pray anywhere, everywhere, anytime you get a minute. Brother Bill's going to be praying here. He's going to the dentist here in a little bit. He'll be praying. He'll be praying. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be grinding away in there, cleaning those teeth, man. Blood will be flying out of his mouth, jerking his, he'll be praying. I guarantee he'll be praying. Hey, listen, you go to Walmart, you better be praying. Hey, man, you go to Sam's to get a hot dog, you better be praying. I can't believe we stood in line that long to get a hot dog from Sam's. Good night. I mean, it must be the, it must be the best deal in town. Amen. I don't get started on that again. Kathy said, how did you get on all that? I don't know how I get on all that. <laughs> Number five, here's another hindrance to prayer. Asking with selfish or wrong motives. Right. We do do that. Oh, yeah. right. we, we, we do that. Will you agree to that? Yeah. Here's the verse, James 4, 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. Oh, Lord, I need a new plane. Oh, Lord, I need a new house. I need a new vehicle. I need a million dollars put in my bank account. You know what? I, you know what? God could, could God answer that? Many times we pray, many times we pray selfishly. Instead of praying for our needs, we pray for our wants. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. There have been some times I prayed for some wants. I'm not going to lie about it. But I'm going to tell you what, listen, a lot of times our prayers are hindered because we pray selfishly. Right. And we pray, we pray amiss because we, our prayers are hindered because, because we've asked for things selfishly and, and in the wrong way. You know, the Bible says, well, you know, Jesus is going to answer your prayer. Well, listen, yeah, God, yeah, listen, Jesus answers every prayer you ever prayed. Amen. Yes. Amen. No. Amen. Wait. He, you says if my prayers aren't getting out, you every prayer you pray will get answered. And aren't you? I remember that. I shouldn't say this. I remember that. Remember that song just popped into my mind. Remember anybody know? I know y'all don't know who this is. Garth Brooks. Anybody remember Garth Brooks? Remember he sung that song. Thank God for unanswered prayers. I bet if we could all testify, we'd be we we could say that we prayed for things, and then thankfully God in His wisdom didn't give them to us. <laughs> and then down the road, you realize, wow, I'm glad I didn't get what I asked for. So a hindrance to our prayer life is asking amiss, asking selfishly, and things that we, you know, we just we we don't need. You know, man, we just we just pray, we just pray and take all that on there because we just ask amiss, and we don't receive when we do that. Number six, well, here's a big one: Satan can hinder your prayers. Do you believe that? Man, I don't want, if I get on this, I won't get anywhere else if I'm not careful. There is a spiritual battle going on today. Amen. This stuff, now let me say this to you, and, I, and again, I know you're probably tired of hearing it, but I'm not tired of saying it. This stuff in the Middle East is satanically yes, it is. instigated. Yes. It's a satanic war. It's a spiritual war. It's a jihad. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual war. Those Arabs, Muslims, Palestinians, Hamas, 
Hezbollah. They've been trained from the time of a child to kill the Jews. They call Israel the little Satan, and they call America the big Satan. Now, I know, and I know, I know that there are some Muslims that, that have been saved, and there are some Muslims that are probably good people. I'm not, I'm not broad stroking every one of them. But I tell you what, they've been trained. They've been schooled to kill you. That's what the Quran from the time, from the time. That's, it, that's indoctrinated into them. The Quran teaches that. Their holy book, that they call it. No, that's about the most unholy book you'd ever read. If you'd read what it says about women, you'd throw it in the trash. You never would look at it. It's an unholy book. What we're seeing happening in the world today is, is, is a satanic attack of proportions that we've probably never, ever seen in our lifetime. I heard somebody say the other day, and I believe this. Now, you might not believe this, but I believe this. They said this is the biggest thing we've seen since World War II. Yes. And, and they named all the things that have happened since World War II. This is the biggest thing that we've seen happen since World War II. And we're getting everybody in the world involved in it. And people are choosing sides. And guess guess who's on the losing side? It looks like num by numbers. you got people over America protesting against us. And against Israel and in favor of Hamas and Hezbollah. <clears throat> Folks, we got some problems. Right. And I'm going to tell you what, Satan can hinder your prayers. You say, I don't know about that. Well, I'm going to give you a verse to back it up. Remember when Daniel was praying? Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. And this is the, the angel came down and told Daniel this. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. The angel came and told Daniel, said, listen, from the very first time you prayed, your words were heard, and I'm here. I'm here. I'm come for thy words. Well, listen, listen to what this verse says. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. You know what Gabriel was saying? Gabriel was saying, Daniel, God heard your prayers. And I was sent to answer your prayers and to take care of that. And Satan, that's, that's, that's king, that prince of the kingdom of Persia is reference to Satan. And said Satan had hindered him. Demons, there are demons out there. You might not believe that. There are demons out there. Right. And man, listen. And he said, that, that, hey, listen, that had hindered me 21 days. It was so, the battle was so strong that Michael, another archangel, had to come down and help out. But he said, I'm here. Aren't you glad that God's able to intervene and break through? Amen. But I'm going to tell you what, you say, man, I pray, I just pray and pray and it seems like my prayers are not going anywhere. You don't, you don't know what's going on right up here. You can't see that, we can't see that realm. You, was it Elisha? That they would come down, man, they sent down to get Elisha. Remember the king? The king said, man, every time something happened, man, somebody's, somebody's telling, and, and, and we need to find out who they said. It's that prophet down there. It's Elisha. He knows everything. That's going. They sent the army down to get him. And Elisha sent his servant out and said, go out was it walk, get water or wood that morning. He went outside and come back in. And he looked, and around, around about all the mountain, there was the army of the enemy that had come down to get Elisha. And he come running back in and said, Master, what are we going to do? I said, don't worry about it. He said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. And he sent him back out that time. And the army of the enemy was still there. But round about the army of the enemy, he saw the angels of God gathered. Amen. Folks, I'm telling you, you can fluff it off. 
You say, I don't believe it. There's not, there is a spiritual warfare going on. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, we can't see them out there. I just personally believe, if I had time to teach on it, I, will, I personally believe every saved person has a guardian angel. Amen. I believe that. I believe, I believe that. Man, listen, listen, ain't no doubt my, ain't no doubt my life. He snatched me out several times. And tell your testimony. And that truck, I bet if the truth be known, hey, we don't know the times that we've been spared and saved. Because there's a guardian angel riding around right close to us. You say, I can't see him. Don't have to see him. I know they're there. Hallelujah. Ooh, I'm about to get happy. Aren't you glad that in the midst of everything going on in the world today, I, I honestly, I'm going to say it one more time. I don't know if, if unsaved people are just so blinded to the fact or they're just so wrapped up in their life. How in the world could you know what's going on in the world and be able to lay down and sleep at night? Knowing that any minute, any minute, somebody, all it takes is somebody to bump somebody the wrong way right now. We've got all the bullies of the world out there just waiting for somebody just to bump them the wrong way. And man, how in the world can you lay down and sleep at night knowing that, man, that you might wake up with a bomb coming right through your house? Chemical warfare. Wow. Huh? It's all around. It's all around us. Contaminate our water. Shut our power down. Shut our internet down. You shut the internet down in America, you shut America down. And but there are people out there there's just hey, there are people out there with their fingers on the button waiting. And boy, don't you think Satan's not, he's fighting. And if we could see, I bet, I bet you, hey, I bet you, uh, hey, it's hard to tell what it'd look like if we could see the wrestling match going on out there in the spiritual world right now. That's why we must pray. We must pray. We must pray because Satan can hinder your prayers. Amen. Number seven, a lack of faith. Lack of faith. They know you used to pray if you don't believe it. People say, well, you know, it's like getting saved. You know, you can't get saved if you don't believe you can get saved. Right. Hebrews 11, 6 says about, you know, and him that's able to save, you know, you got to come to God and believe that he is and that he's able. You got to believe God. Listen, you got to believe God. When you ask, you got to believe, yes, he, he said it, I believe he'll save me. That's right. If you have a lack, faith is what moves God. Faith is what impresses God. Hey, hey, come here, come here. You'll be praying here just in a minute, will you? <laughs> Bill and Marge are slipping out. They got that dentist appointment there. I'm still going to say I'd rather be here than there. Yeah. But hey, I want, I want, what was I saying? Faith, thank you. There's, I remember a guy who sang a song, Faith is the Key That Unlocks the Door. Anybody ever heard that? Yes. Remember that old song? You ever heard that? Faith is the key that unlocks the door. It, faith is what moves God. Abraham believed God. And by faith. I just read, I just read, I think, I was in Hebrews 13 today, Hebrews 12 yesterday, Hebrews 11 the day before that. The roll call of the heroes of faith. And I just, as I was reading that through there, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith, you know what? You know the world. The world doesn't function by faith; they function by sight. If you've got to see it before you believe it, you might not ever see it. You got to believe it before you see it. Did I say that right? Yeah. That just kind of rolled out. You know, most people most people go by sight. If they can't see it, they're not going to believe it. That's why people don't, can't get saved. They can't believe God and trust God. They can't believe this book. Right. There's no use to pray if you don't believe what you're praying about. Right. You say, I've been praying for years and years. I just keep right on praying. Amen. Amen. I have a t-shirt that says, 
We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Absolutely. So many, so many Christians are trying to live their Christian life by sight. Right. You know, I just think, I, honestly, as we think of it, Sebi's on the program. God bless you, my brother. I saw you made a comment on that. You know, Sebi, Sebi, Sebi's waiting to help us. We're waiting. John, we're waiting to get this building started. And I honestly don't know how we're going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. To you. I honestly don't know how we're going to do it. But I got faith to believe that God's going to provide and take care of us. Amen. He's brought us this far. And if he's brought us this far, I think he'll take us the rest of the way through. Amen. Amen. You just have to believe. I just believe that. Remember when we started praying at 320? I got so tired of paying that 5000 some dollar a month lease that I couldn't. I was just about to get, I was just about ready to throw up. I just got so tired of that. And I thought, man, we can't do this. I mean, I just began to just believe that God was going to do something. And you know what? He did. He did. Look what we've got. Huh? Look what we've got. Would you rather be sitting here or be sitting down there paying $5,000 for nothing? How many years we paid that? Three years? We paid, we paid a hundred, almost $200,000. That's called rent. They have anything to show for it. Well, God has blessed us. Amen. Amen. Man, let's just keep going by faith. When you when you pray at 320, pray in faith, believing. Amen. Amen. Wow. James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. Amen. Have you ever had to pray for wisdom? <laughs> Boy, I have. I have. Oh, God, help me. I need, I need wisdom. Amen. Amen. Then verse number six said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Listen to what he said. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Man, hey, listen, Satan gets you doubting and gets you shaking around and on wavering ground. Hey, listen, you, <laughs> your prayers have already been hindered. Pray and believe that God will do it. They probably some of you has got family you're praying for, been praying for them, be saved for years. Amen. Don't give up. Just keep praying. Yeah. Just keep praying. Satan wants you to quit. Yeah. Just keep praying. Verse number seven, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. He's talking about that man that wavereth. Verse number eight, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Wow, if we could just be people of prayer and people of faith, we could see God do great things. Amen. Faith is what moves God. Right. Just that you simply, people say, well, you know, you got to prove this to me. Look, God doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. He wants you to believe him. Right. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to put your simple faith in, in him, and God can do it. Do it, amen? Amen. Did I mess up? I, I thought I may have had the, had the wrong verse. I, I, I knew you'd be watching for me if I did. Yeah. Were we good? We All right. Did, part, part number five. Here we go. I'm not going to finish the lesson today. I don't think. You have a prayer helper. Helper. Part number five. You have a prayer help, helper. I can't get that up. Prayer helper. When you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit helps you. Amen. 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 Listen to this verse. Listen to this verse. Romans 8, 26, likewise the Spirit, that's a capital S, capital S means what? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There have been times you did not know how to pray? Hey, there, listen, in time of sickness and, and hospital visits and, and people that are about to die, and, and, and you don't really know how to pray sometimes. You, just, you know what you got to do? Just, God, your will be done. Because you look at people and say, man, oh, man, I, I don't know how to, really, I don't know how to pray. Aren't you glad that the Spirit of God 
Take, he knows what's in your heart. And he makes intercession for us. And we can't even, we might not even be able to verbalize it. We may not even be able to put it into words. Yeah. How do you pray for them? Yeah, I mean, because, you know, just waiting on your heart when it happens. Well, it is. It, it, the suicide's terrible. Yeah, they do that about two, three weeks ago. It happened. Uh, well, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Wow. He wow. He went to the garage and turned his car on and took his $2 with him and went to sleep. Wow. Isn't that, uh, suicide is, suicide is one of the toughest things you can face. Uh. Let me just stop right here and tell you what I what I think. And this is probably going to go contrary to what many people believe, but I believe it's, it's, it's the Bible. Suicide is not an unforgivable sin. No, no it's not unforgivable. No. And that's where we get in trouble. I've heard so many Christians say about somebody, and it's, it's cruel to say that. Suicide's a bad choice with bad consequences, but it's not unforgivable. All your sins have been forgiven. There's not anything you can do do that's going to that's going to stop that. Now I wouldn't want to face the Lord with that, but I'd rather face the Lord saved like that. So suicide is not unforgivable. So you know, it's suicide is people just you know. Sometimes people have mental conditions. Sometimes people are going through depression. Sometimes people got the weight of the world on them. Sometimes they don't know what to do. And I guarantee you, I tell you what, I tell you what Satan's telling them to do. And I don't know if he's ever told you this. And if you'd be honest today, you'd probably say, yeah, he has. Just, just go ahead and end it. Just run, that, just run your car into that rock wall right there. Run off the ledge right there. You might as well just give up. That's what Satan says to people. Now you say, he's never said that to me, then you're blessed. But Satan will tell you, you might as well just give up. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up in a time of prayer. We just need to, we just need to pray for the families and, and comfort them. But man, I've been around people that would say, oh, they're, they're, you know they, they they're lost and they can't be saved and they've they've just they've just sealed. no that's not that's not true. The Bible says your sins have all been forgiven you, and 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 suicide though it's terrible is not unforgivable. And that's the hope that I have. I think about the people that I I've known some people and Christian people that have committed suicide. And man, listen, listen, you don't know what's going on inside somebody's head. It's like people. It's like people with dementia or Alzheimer's. You know, I've known preachers that've gotten old, and and man, they, they, I mean, I mean, they were just just the finest Christians, and that, that as they got old and got Alzheimer's and dementia, they began to cuss, and and just nobody could fool. You know, I mean, just nasty. And it, well, that's not. You think God's holding that against somebody? That's a disease. It's a sickness. And the same thing. The same thing with suicide. So. Thank you. I'm glad you. I don't know if I've had a chance to even talk about that, but it may not be the answer you wanted. But that's that's what I believe is people that commit suicide if they're saved are saved, and and you know that's not anything I would recommend somebody to do. It's not anything I would encourage anybody to do. I've tried to try to talk people out of that. I've tried to help people avoid that, but it doesn't cost you cause you to lose your soul, and in that in that we can take consolation and that we can say thank you for the grace of God Amen. thank you for the forgiveness remember what the Bible says let's go through it one more time right here while we're on this topic while we're on this topic remember what the Bible says all your sins have been forgiven he forgives all your sins we can say this it's, re, it's review all means how much all. all that's all your past sins all the sins you're committing today and all the sins that you could ever commit in the future, they've all been forgiven. by the, When you get saved, they're covered by the blood. Man, that ought, to make a, that ought to make a dry Baptist get up and just shout hallelujah. 
I mean, hallelujah, that you, we've been saved. Listen, my, again, my poor old daddy, bless his heart, one of the finest Christian men I ever knew, but he never could get settled in on that fact. He was scared to death he would always lose his salvation. I tell you, all the things I'm scared of, losing my salvation is not one of them. If I, because I'm going to tell you something. If I could lose it, I would have already lost it. And if you could lose it, you could have already lost it. It's safe and secure and sealed by God Almighty. Wow. Yes, we're supposed to live right. Yes, we're supposed to do right. And yes, we're supposed to confess our sins. And yes, we're supposed to keep the prayer lines open. All those things will break your fellowship, but they won't break your sonship. You can't break your sonship once you become a child of God. That's man, you're so, you don't have to. People say, "I'm just so I'm just so concerned. I'm going to lose my soul." Not if you're saved. If you're truly saved, you can't lose it, because if you could, you would. And if Satan could take it, he would. You better be glad you're in the hands of Jesus. And he's got you safe and secure right there, man, in his hands. And there's nobody, nothing that can get in there and get you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good question. Good question. Good good comment, Pat. Thank you for that. Let me finish these verses here and we'll stop right there. And then we'll get into, get into maybe finish this lesson next week or maybe we'll move on. Verse 27. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then here's the verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Listen, I've been, there are times you just don't know how to pray and don't know what to pray for. But we've got a prayer helper that lives right inside of us. That can take our innermost longings and burdens our troubles, our heartaches, and present them to God Almighty on our behalf because he's making intercession for us. He knows when we're hurting. He knows when we're in pain. He knows when we're discouraged. He knows when we're upset. He knows when we don't know what to do. Folks, over these last three lessons, this is again, here's my goal, is to try to encourage you to be a prayer warrior. Pray, pray, pray. Don't ever stop. Don't ever give up. Don't ever slow down. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep trusting. And God works in his own time. God's not on my time schedule. There's been a lot of times I've tried to get him on mine. Never has worked out very good. I'll just give you this little heads up. Ain't never worked out too good. People say, well, you know, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put God on a on a on a time clock, or I'm gonna put him in a box, or he's gonna do this, or I'm gonna make a deal with God. God doesn't have to make deals with anybody. God is God. All we can do is have faith and trust him. Amen. So I hope today that you got something out of that lesson and uh I don't, maybe we'll finish up next week or maybe we'll move on. We'll see where we are uh, as, as the week goes on. Amen? Amen. Thank you for being online today. May God bless you. We love you. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget tomorrow night, Wednesday night, prop night, 7 o'clock. Be here. Amen.